Hi, I'm Barbecue Bob with the Barbecue Guru. I have Big Mo Quezon here with me today, and he's gonna show you some great tips and tricks on cooking beef ribs. I'm a big fan of beef ribs. Probably my favorite cut on the Hokal, over steak, over brisket. I love cooking great beef ribs. So what we have here, we have a three bone beef short rib. Um, I'm gonna give you some tips on how to prepare it and season it and to cook it. Reef ribs have a great amount of marbling. Even in a select grade, they're still gonna be a great eat. I actually prefer a choice or a prime when it comes to eating a beef rib because these beef ribs are so rich in marbling. If you get something like a Kobe or a Wagyu, it is over the top insanely marbled. And what happens is you have to cook this for even longer to help render out a lot of that fat. And a lot of times you don't even get all that fat rendered out. So once you eat that beef rib, like a Kobe or Wagyu beef rib, it has a tremendous flavor, this fat is flavor, but it's almost gelatinous and extremely rich. And you may only get a one or two bites out of it because it's just over the top rich. So I like to eat more of the beef, the beef flavor, and uh, not be as rich. So that's why I normally cook a prime or a choice Angus when it comes to a beef rib. Look for a nice meaty rib. Um, it's gonna be shallow when you first get it when it's raw, meaning that it's not gonna be that tall. This will actually grow. Meat will be all the way to the ends of the bones in the raw state. As they cook, the meat starts to shrink and it starts to rise, okay? That's just the rendering aspect of cooking a beef rib. Next is, you hear with pork ribs, take the membrane off the back. I leave the membrane on the back of the rib because it helps hold the rib together once you cook it properly. If you cook this rib properly and you remove the membrane before cooking, what's gonna happen is once this renders out, the meat will just slough off the side of the bone. And one of the aspects of cooking a beef rib is the showcasing of the bone. It's very cro magnon very, uh, you know, very, very appealing to be able to take a big beef rib and be able to eat on it. I mean, when you go down to Texas, a lot of these restaurants, that's what they have. They have the meat on the bone and it's just a, a visual thing uh, to do. Next is I focus on a, uh, a rub that complements uh, beef. I'm a big fan of uh, black pepper, garlic, salt. Um, that's all you really need to make a great beef rib. Now, there's a lot of different rubs out there. There's some that have sugars in them. There's some that have a lot of different ever seen like cumin or coriander or whatever. Whatever you do, I would kind of stay away with rubs that have a lot of sugar, especially when you're cooking a cut like this, because this, this will take out like eight hours or 10 hours, depending on how hot you're going to cook it and how long you're going to cook it for. And if you have a rub that has a lot of sugar in it, it's going to over caramelize. Now you've got this beautiful, almost black color, which is great, but that's just the natural long process of cooking a beef rib. This has no sugar in it. It's just salt, pepper, and garlic, basically. And you got this beautiful, beautiful color on this beef rib. That's what you want. You don't want the rib to be light brown like this cutting board. You want it to be dark, and it'll have a, just a very appealing color to it. For this beef rib, I use my Texas brisket rub, which is, like I said, black pepper, salt, garlic. It has a few other things in there, but that's the gist of it. It's just mostly salt, pepper, and garlic. Now, depending on your pit, and how your pit works. Um, there's pits that the heat comes from the bottom, there's some pits that heat comes from the top. I always cook everything, you know, bone side down or fat cat down. I always cook all my meat side on the meat. I don't care if it's brisket, I don't care if it's ribs, I don't care if it's pork, but I cook meat side up because this is what I'm showcasing. I want you to look at this beautiful bark and what I create. If you had this upside down cooking on the rack, once you flip it or move it around, you're gonna knock a lot of that rub off in the bottom of the cooker, and it'll actually affect the appearance of your meat. And it's all about showcasing your, your, the hard work you put in of cooking that protein. Now, we use the shotgun smoker to cook these beef ribs. They cook probably for eight, 10 hours, or about, yeah, about, 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 eight, about 10 hours at 240 degrees, and they were just sitting right. And I don't wrap, I never wrap them, because you work hard for this beautiful bark. And if you wrap in foil, what that does, completely in foil, you're actually steaming the surface of this meat because the moisture has nowhere to go. And then it can actually make the, 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 the surface of the meat mushy. And it'll just, the rub can just slough off with your finger. So I never like to wrap beef ribs on the smoker. I, like, I just throw them in the back of the cooker and just walk away and just let it do its thing. If you don't have a pit that flows really good, doesn't burn as clean as it should, 
you may need a half to wrap it. Once you get a good color, mahogany color on this beef rib, I'll, if you're gonna wrap it all, wrap it in butcher paper. That'll stop the smoke penetrating the, uh, the, the, the beef and you kind of preserve your color and keep on cooking. Because beef, uh, what's great about butcher paper, it acts like foil. Uh, it's porous, so it allows the excess moisture to pass through the butcher paper, but it still closes it up enough to where you can get the internal temperature done in a reasonable amount of time. So once you get your pit set to 240 degrees, you can cook 220, you can cook at 300 degrees. But I always feel that lower and longer, slower temperatures work better because you give time for the collagens and the tissues to break down and get soft. That's what you want. I can cook this thing in two hours and it'll be a temperature, but it'll be a bouncing ball when you get done because it'll be tough because you didn't allow the membranes and the collagens and the fat to slowly render out and work on the tissues to make them just succulent at the end of the cook. Mm -hmm. So once it's, like I said, a beef rib is one of the easiest things to cook besides a pork butt. You put it back in the cooker and you cook it. Now, this beef rib was done, we took it all about 270 degrees. 205, 207, that's a great number for like a, uh, a choice or a prime brisket internal dump temperature. Okay, because you don't want to undershoot it. If you took this beef rib off at say 195 degrees, it may feel good because it's giving you a false sense when you put the probe in it. But as soon as this beef rib cools, it's going to tighten up. And then that's when you get a beef rib, just like brisket, if it's undercooked, it's going to be tough to chew. It's going to be tough to come off the bone. And that's just not a good eating experience. So you want to make sure you don't overshoot it to where it becomes mush. So it's going to be about 205, 207 degrees on a beef rib to give that great feel. And all you do is take the probe and you just stick it between the bones and it should be like a knife to hot butter. It should have great, great feel. So when you stick it in here, it should be just like this and it should just feel like butter. And that's what this does. It just feels great. There should be a lot of resistance. If you cook it, I don't care if you're cooking brisket, pork butt or whatever. If you're cooking and you stick the probe in and there's resistance as you're moving in and out of that protein, it's not done yet. Once you get it done, you let it rest. Like with the brisket, I'll let it rest for three or four hours in the cam uh, cambro. You can take this butcher, uh, uh, this beef ribs right out of the pit, wrap it in butcher paper, just set it off to the side and let it cool a little bit. And then after that, it's almost ready to eat because it's just has a different structure versus brisket. So you just come in here. Ooh, baby, look at that. And here you go. Being that I left the membrane on the back of this rib, it's hold, help, holding, holding this beef rib together. This is the showcase. So when you're at a restaurant and you're sitting a beef rib on the table along with your good sides, it's going to look absolutely incredible. That's what you want. If you overcook the beef rib and, and take the membrane on top of that, this will actually just slough off. But as you can see, even here, the striations are marbling. If you had something like a Wagyu or a Kobe, it would be insanely marble, and you'll never get that rendered out. I mean, it'll take you forever to do that. Three so, more fast than me, Exactly, exactly. But look at that, that's a beautiful, got beautiful bark, got a beautiful smoke ring. It is appealing. That's what a great looking beef rib is all about.